Hello, everyone. Uh, good evening. And uh, we have enough participants, so I think we'll get started. Uh, in any case, we are going to be sharing a recording of this uh, online. So don't worry if you cannot attend it, uh, it will be shared and you can definitely refer to it. Uh, while making your applications, if you've already applied, if you want to tweak your applications, you can refer to this. Uh, you can refer to this session uh, itself. Uh, so we'll just get started. Uh, welcome all the participants. Uh, we are a fairly large group of primarily um, enterprises that have been deploying mm -hmm. hardware-driven uh, livelihood solutions. Um, so I'll get started. I'll cover the initial. Uh, aspects of the EDP program uh, and I'll just set a context on you know why we want to do this program and how we want to take this forward and then after that my colleague Jayaswini will help uh, you know complete some of the uh, application processes and the FAQs she'll help cover uh, during the pro uh, during the session. Uh, I also have my other colleagues who will be able to answer questions if you have any questions you can actually put it on the uh, on the chat itself and uh, there are a couple of colleagues who can help answer or help you with the right links um, so we'll get started. Um, so this program, we actually started sometime last year. It's not a very old program. We wanted to initiate the program because for a long time, we were doing work with enterprises. You know, we were primarily designing programs with bankers, with training institutes, with government departments. Uh, but I think fundamentally what we all know is the, the backbone from a sustainability perspective for any of these programs end up being your uh, enterprise, right? That ends up becoming the centerpiece for actually enabling something to sustain, for integrating something at a local level. Uh, that's why we actually in initiated a program that was particularly focused on supporting enterprises, high risk support to help enterprises scale, uh, long term support to sort of look at what are those pieces that will actually enable scale over time, right? So um, with that, I'll actually get into the uh, presentation itself. Um, so this is the table of contents that we'll cover today, a little bit on what types of enterprises we want to support, uh, typical challenges that, that these enterprises have been facing. Um, you know, you all will be very well aware of these challenges, but I think feel free to, um, you know, add as well as share that knowledge from a sectoral perspective as well. Uh, why EDP? What is our approach and how EDP is a focus area? Um, specifically about EDP3, uh, what are the timelines that we are envisioning for the overall program? Um, what are some of the types of support that EDP3 is looking to provide? Um, there's also a little bit of summarization that we've done. Like, although this is not a very old program, there have been some significant numbers, both in terms of implementation, in terms of finance unlocked, in terms of, uh, you know, impacted families on the ground. So we'll just go through a little bit of summarization on the EDP work. Uh, we also have uh, two or three enterprises who are part of the previous EDP programs that will talk about how this, how the EDP program has helped them so that the newer enterprises applying can actually sort of see uh, what can be the benefit or the pros uh, of, of such a program that can uh, support the work on the ground. And then we'll go into some FAQs. Uh, primarily, why we started EDP was to support certain technologies, right? And these technologies need to be in solving for certain problems. Uh, these are the types of problems that we're looking at, right? There's a lot of drudgery involved across the value chain, both agri-allied systems and livelihoods, whether it's on-farm, post-harvest, a lot of drudgery and on-farm um, kind of issues that you're seeing on the ground. Um, heat stress issues because of the raising temperatures, you know, workspace issues. So this is an example of the puff price making heat stress units in Karnataka. Uh, similarly, you see issues around, um, you know, non-optimal workspaces uh, in uh, in Dharwad. Uh, this is an example of this, right? So which is very, very manual, very difficult to, you know, navigate. Um, and of course, low value addition potential. Um, uh, uh, you know, these are some of the challenges that we see, you know, drudgery, uh, high operational costs where most of these systems are using, uh, you know, very intensive and high cost of fuels as well. Um, so essentially, the program was meant to solve those problems on the ground, you know, through an enterprise approach. Um, we are primarily talking about supporting enterprises in three sectors, agri-allied sectors, textiles and crafts, and micro-businesses. Micro-businesses is more your retail service sector, those kind of uh, areas, right? 
Um, and, you know, any of these three solutions, it could be a DRE driven, it could be an energy efficient appliance, it could also be a certain kind of roofing system or ventilation system for ensuring that there is a strong workspace, uh, you know, even in the uh, animal husbandry sector, whether it's dairy, poultry, uh, piggery, etc. This makes a huge difference to the mortality and the income levels as well, right? So essentially, any of these three could be value proposition offering, or it could be any one of them or a combination of two or more right so this is essentially the scope of the uh, segments that we're looking to impact through the program um if you are a hardware based uh, solution provider which is actually providing either only hardware or a combination of digital and physical uh, solutions uh, and as long as your solutions are a part of the whole energy optimization piece and as long as you are supplying and servicing that, then you kind of make it as a part of the EDP universe that we are looking to build, right? Um, primarily, your solution should be solving for issues of productivity, income generation, drudgery reduction, which we went through uh, across the sectors of agriculture, allied. Uh, those are essentially the primary sectors that we're looking at. Uh, you need to be registered because this is a, a you know this is a, a program which comes in primarily at a scale stage. So there are different parts of Selco which are supporting uh, more R&D, more early stage, more, you know, proprietors, you know, maybe just ideas or, you know, enterprises in the making. But if you are applying for EDP, you need to have, you know, proven scale phase solutions. Uh, you know, it needs to have a minimum viable product. Uh, there should be a proof of concept already. There should be a clear scale idea in mind. Uh, and how do you want to scale, right? And so, of course, registration is a must. Uh, and so if these factors check, then you are someone who we can, we would really look forward to partnering uh, and taking the conversation further. Now, we have worked with multiple enterprises in different, um, you know, with some we have provided very light touch, just financial support. With some, we have done a very good deep dive where we've worked with banks with them, with government departments, you know, we've championed their technology. So that spectrum we have done. But what we see is largely a lot of the enterprises are facing these types of solutions when it comes to the scale problem, right? Of course, there are other aspects that enterprises would face challenges on, but primarily we see, especially when we're looking at the kind of terrains and end users that we're looking uh, talking about, very high transaction cost uh, for end user acquisition, uh, supply and servicing especially, it, it you know doesn't make sense in many places for enterprises to do that and therefore they don't end up doing that and therefore that is a you know, cycle that uh, that prevents them from scaling effectively and building champions locally, right? Affordability, lack of appropriate financing, uh, lack of available subsidies for that particular product service offering, um, lack of support, scale procurements and programs. So because you don't have other entities that are procuring at a certain, um, you know, minimum order quantity, and that really affects the way in which you can plan out your scale, your inventory, your cash flows, right? Um, low MOQs, I think each of these challenges, can you also look at them as the type of challenges that we are looking to address through this program? So like you you know that, you know, these are issues that you're facing and can the, so, so the proposal that you are pushing through this program or the partnership that you're looking for, can it actually address these challenges, right? scattered demand conversion, right? And therefore you can't, cannot even price the product appropriately because it's a chicken and egg for, you know, unless I get the right kind of investment or the right kind of numbers, how do I actually price my product so that it can be an affordable product, right? Uh, this point is something that we see across the board, uh, operational capacity to scale. And, and, you know, while we will cover that a little bit, we are looking to support also human resources on, uh, you know, planning for scale and meeting certain scales. So, uh, lack of appropriate internal systems and processes for scale, uh, you know, to monitor, to do remote servicing, uh, to really kind of do conversion of, uh, uh, you know, unlocking government support or financial support, right? And this piece is something that we're very interested in doing because we know that while while enterprises are scaling, one of the difficulty that they find is to engage and ensure that there is a very strong community engagement, community trust, there's a local embedding that is happening uh, so that that, in, that that technology can actually impact and scale through local uh, uh, channels as well, right? So these are essentially the types of challenges that we are looking to uh, bridge through this program. Um, 
as i was saying essentially in this program we will be primarily operating only via the enterprises we will not directly be engaging uh, we will be looking at this partnership to strengthen uh, the most and looking at building the capacity of enterprises to be able to work with the end users and convert local partnerships on the ground so that it can better scale essentially so um, this is just a brief on, you know, when we talk about ecosystem approach, we actually talk about how, you know, we need to have government policies in line. We need to have training institutes providing capacity building. Uh, we need to have partnerships with cooperatives, philanthropic NGOs, FPOs. We need to have financing institutes that are lending. And the, a lot of this honest kind of lies on the enterprise to play the role of that glue, right? So that's essentially what we're looking to strengthen uh, through this program. Um, what is the EDP program? So typically uh, in the EDP program, we will be supporting two types of uh, costs. Uh, beyond that, there are other aspects that we can look at supporting, which are non-related to financial aspects. But the main two financial associated costs are hardware costs. So gap support associated with hardware. This could be anywhere from uh, you know, uh, zero to uh, whatever, you know, 70, 80%, depending on the justification that is in place, the type of community that we are impacting, uh, the kind of hardware, the cost of that hardware, of course. But there is one component, which is gap cost associated with hardware and tech deployment. Um, we are categorizing ONM here as well, primarily things like, let's say, you know, you are implementing... Um, you know, a hundred unit in in a hundred units in, in in one district, right? And you need maybe need to ensure that you keep certain hardware pieces that actually wear out faster locally, or you need to keep uh, remote monitoring systems to actually do better O and M. So. Uh, some of these ideas that you want to inculcate so that your o &M improves, these are ideas that we're looking to partner on as well. Um, of course, the hard costs are for deployment of energy efficiency or DRE and energy efficiency technologies, as well as DRE integrating into existing systems. So both like existing systems that you want to augment or newer systems that you want to deploy. For both of these, there are gap costs that you can uh, avail through this program. Uh, the other type of supports is soft support. Uh, so things like scoping studies for you know, exploring new markets, development of training modules. Um, you know, it could be awareness, capacity building, going for exhibitions or demonstrations, things like that, which are more your softer and intangible costs. Um, ideally, we look for a ratio. Uh, it, there needs to be a healthy ratio, but we are looking at the soft costs kind of over time them converting into more and more hard costs. So we're not looking at a very, you know, like within this period, this training module led to these many conversions. We are hoping that those training modules is used for a significant amount of time and could lead to a better scale uh, for the program, right? Um, our larger goal is really to capture learnings uh, from successful enterprise-led scale models. Um, in the livelihood DRE ecosystem. And so this, this phase of EDP, we've also incorporated certain cross-learning within, uh, within the EDP community uh, and the enterprises that we've been working with. Um, while you're applying, make sure that you have um, you know, the overall program objectives and solution and very clear technical specification on what is it that you want to scale for whom. Uh, make sure that your scale strategy is very clearly laid out, your approach, your partnerships, your financial models that you're proposing, uh, why the leverage is important, how did you arrive at that leverage, that is very important for us to even begin a good brainstorm with you. Um, you know, make sure that you have a very clear step-by-step -step process of achieving end user adoption and scale with all of the processes and partner involved. So say, for example, if there are certain partners that are involved, how will that cash flow actually, I mean, how will that you know, transaction actually happen? Like who will pay whom? How do, how do, how are you proposing the gap finance to reach the end user? Uh, you know, when and how will the credit reach, et cetera? So basically steps will be very helpful. Uh, regional focus and why those regions are very critical for your enterprise to scale and your solution to scale in and specific gaps that EDP can help you bridge in achieving that scale. So these are largely things that you need to ensure that within the application form, they're coming out clearly uh, so that we can, you know, uh, convert things faster and more smoothly. Um, with that, I will pause there and I will, uh, you know, hand it over to my colleague, uh, Jaiswini, who will take you through some examples of the type of work, uh, you know, examples of the type of support uh, that we have provided. 
uh, she will also be showing you, you know, which are the enterprises that uh, we have supported in the past uh, and the FAQ. So I think a lot of people had the question around, you know, if we've already been a part of it, can we also apply, uh, you know, uh, what if it's a similar proposal from the previous? So we will be answering those kinds of questions as well um, as soon as Jaspani sort of walks through uh, some of the other slides. Hello. Uh, thank you, Uda, for the brief. So uh, we'll be going through the EDP program. Basically, what is the process of applying it? What type of deliverables we are expecting? And what is the timeline we are looking at? So let me just... So basically, uh, just like how Huda said, there are two different costs associated with the program. One is the hard cost and one is the soft cost. So uh, based, on, based, based on that, we have split the scope of work, which is making it like Mayor telling us what type of activities you guys can take under soft or under hard. So the first one is support for implementation. This basically is just the hard cost where it means that you can either use the gap for, uh, finance for deployment of new technologies or, you know, DRE integration of them. It can be... Uh, uh, so it can either be an energy efficient technology or it can be a yeah it can be just uh, setting up new installments with DRE or without DRE. The next thing will be business development where this is a sort of soft cost associated where uh, the enterprises can enter uh, just to enter a new geography, understand how the geography looks like, what are its end user uh, resources, uh, what type of studies they can take and they can capture some existing models, uh, existing case uh, success stories and build some uh, case studies where they can show the success of their technology, which they can then uh, use it for uh, entering new uh, geographies. And then uh, the other thing can be the strategic uh, HR thing where they can actually have a dedicated HR uh, source or resource where they can, you know, when they're entering a new geography, show what is, uh, how, show the uh, service and maintenance, how does it look like, and set up a distribution of HR. The next thing is, uh, this is again a soft cost where the enterprises, uh, they can develop a sort of uh, training modules. This can either be a, in terms of a program or step-by-step -step installation, do's and don'ts and minimum maintenance that can actually help the technology to be utilized uh, efficiently by the end user or to be uh, used by the technician to fix some of the technology and installation guides. And uh, the next thing is outreach. So basically, uh, this is uh, this is something that's a broad uh, thing. So outreach and marketing means that if an enterprise is already existing, they can uh, use some of our uh, support to go and uh, visit any mailers or participate in any exhibition to conduct demonstration of their technology or uh, uh, conduct exposure visits of, for some of the stakeholders like government or create a brochure that can be distributed and that can be shared for uh, digital marketing and outreach. And the last thing is that there'll be a, there's a component of certification and empowerment where the uh, technology can get some sort of certification or they can apply for certification from any of the regulated bodies uh, just to, uh, uh, with the product specification that they have and that can be uh, as a evidence for the, that can be used as an evidence to show the other stakeholders about the scalability of their or technologies. Uh, the, Next thing is the program timeline. So the entire program is scheduled for 12 months. So we have already rolled out the TOR, uh, uh, the, which the last date is October 23rd. So the TOR is already in our Selco Foundation website. So uh, we expect the enterprises to fill it up uh, with uh, all the proposals and all with the format is there. After that, there'll be a one month of due diligence where uh, there'll be a jury which will be deciding and evaluating the enterprise's budget, looking at uh, what type of proposals have been submitted, what are the costs, uh, etc. And then, based on that, we will actually uh, send an email to all the enterprises who have been selected and who have uh, whom we have been uh, who have been selected and also the enterprises whom have not been selected and we'll start them uh, onboarding and kickoff of the pro program. So the program is expected to run until October 2025. That's about one month or 12 months, uh, one year or 12 months. So just in the span of 12 months, there'll be a monthly discussion where we can, where we'll have calls with the vendors. We'll ask them what kind of challenges they are facing or what is the progress that's uh, 
uh, that the progress is looking like for them or if what kind of support do they need from Selco Foundation or from any other partner. And uh, they'll also uh, post that uh, one month thing. There'll also be a quarterly sort of uh, meeting where we will actually, uh, quarterly meeting where we'll actually have a sort of thing where they'll have to achieve the, uh, the uh, so, sorry, uh, the proposed budget. Uh, they'll have to actually split this in quarter wise. So we're looking at three quarter, uh, four quarters in the span of 12 months. So the quarterly field visit, et cetera, will be more like where we are uh, talking to the enterprises, understanding uh, all that uh, reporting, what type of uh, scaling that has been done. And the discussion will be uh, revolving around the deliverables and what kind of support do they need then uh, we have also planned a midway uh, cross learning workshop where we'll be bringing all the enterprises uh, in our conference and we'll be talking about all the challenges what are the success stories that has uh, that has worked for them and what kind of support do they need and uh, networks uh, creating a channel of networks for them then uh, in the last three months, we are looking at uh, evaluating the impacts of these enterprises where they'll be, uh, where, where we'll actually go uh, capture some of the successful uh, stories and build case studies through it, which, which will talk about the learnings of the EDP program altogether. And the last part will be actually looking at some of the champion case studies where we can uh, share these at the larger level. So this the program is uh, in, ending by October 25th. Uh, 2000 October uh, 30th 2025 so this is just a uh, snapshot of all the enterprises that we work these were but uh, these are a total of 46 enterprises so. yeah so uh, just giving you an example of uh, your technologies we worked with. The first one was NeoMotion, where uh, we worked with them on a project which said Livelihood on Wheels, basically where they helped uh, uh, people with disabilities set up some uh, livelihood uh, uh, solutions. So the first one was where um, an end user called Sunil in uh, Ahmed Nagar in Maharashtra set up a printer shop, uh, which was supported by NeoMotion. The next uh, the next summary uh, the next example is uh, by prompt innovation where uh, so they installed a, a bulk uh, milk can chiller, chiller which is actually used to store the camel milk that is highly prone to uh, spoilage within few hours of collection so this was installed in Rajasthan and the other uh, the last one is with temperate technology where uh, this cooling system was installed in uh, the Andhra Pradesh, where the uh, farmers could actually come and store their uh, vegetables that would uh, like be cool and would not spoil for a long time, for like uh, some hours. So now with this, uh, I call upon uh, one, some of our EDP enterprises to present. Uh, I'll just uh, call upon Alto Precision. Yeah, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Asad. Uh, am I audible? Yeah, my name is Asad and I'm the founder of uh, Alto Position. Um, we'll hi, Asad. Uh, are we audible? So we'll be yeah. sharing the screen and uh, you can press, uh, you can talk about your experience with uh, EDP 1 and 2. Okay. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Hello. Hello. Yeah, shall I talk about it now? Yeah. 
Yeah. Hi, yeah. you can start now. Yeah. Yeah. Hi. Um, yeah. So my name is Asal, and I'm the founder of Alto Position. Uh, we make uh, uh, off-grid processing units, uh, primarily uh, uh, focusing on rice processing units. Our uh, geographies that we work in are Andhra Pradesh, Tamil Nadu, and Karnataka. Uh, so essentially, we use the EDP one program uh, to uh, as a catalyst to help us sort of reach out to uh, uh, um, uh, to last mile uh, partners uh, conduct demos and uh, conduct demos and uh, trainings uh, reach out to end users uh, uh, onboard end users for the application for the PMFME applications uh, and to uh, essentially uh, uh, in, uh, uh, go ahead with implementations as well uh, can we see the next slide? Yeah, we've done a total of 13 units. Uh, around two, um, uh, around two of the, uh, around we did around two banker trainings and two, uh, uh, two trainings with the, with uh, around four trainings with end users. Uh, each demo that we hi just a yeah. minute yeah just a minute i think the screen sharing is not happening just a minute sure yeah yeah Yeah, you can continue. Thank you. Yeah, so this is the overall work plan that we uh, that we followed for EDP one and two. Uh, over here, we use the the program essentially to uh, get the costs to uh, reach out to users. Uh, but before using out before reaching out to users, we would onboard the DRP of that district or the partner organization. In in certain cases, it could be an organization like RYSS or um, or a, a tribal department of a certain district. Um, so we reach out to, to using the uh, the DRP and the partner organization. We we organize demos for users, where we identify uh, users who are interested in taking uh, taking our technology. Once the user is identified, uh, we then um, uh, we then reach out to uh, the local bank and the uh, processing department for the PMFME or any government. Uh, a government scheme that that uh, if the if the that is if the users aren't, aren't able to afford the system, uh, which is usually the case, uh, then we reach out to a local uh, uh, to the to the local processing department or the or the local bank or the local uh, uh, agri department to see how to to essentially ascertain if there are any schemes or any uh, any um, method by which the, the the end users can can get uh, finance uh, based on that uh, based on that interaction we, we we do an application in the department or in the bank um, and and the remain and the amount that is sanctioned based based on the amount that gets sanctioned per user we then reach out to the to selco uh, 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 to the procurement department and and uh, and and uh, and request for the delta uh, or the remaining amount. Uh, once the once the loan once the PMFME ap application is done and the leverage amount is 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 uh, is 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 gotten under the program, we then uh, conduct installation and service. Uh, apart from installation service, uh, we also have uh, we also have local uh, a, a local partner or a local. Um, uh, a local representative who who looks at uh, who essentially looks at the uh, looks at the uh, continued service. So we don't essentially go into an area where we haven't identified a local uh, uh, person or a local partner who who's, who will facilitate and help us with the installation and service. So this is the overall work plan that we that, that we do. Um, now based on this, uh, we have in both in EDP one and two, we've done a total of fifteen systems. Uh, each system we uh, where we've gotten a gap finance of about uh, 55% and a leverage of about 45%. Uh, 
and the overall idea is to uh, increase leverage and decrease gap finance however that is uh, that is extremely challenging as as a lot of times the leverage amount depends on the um, on the available fund in 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 the government scheme or the willingness of the bank to fund uh, for example under pmfme the maximum cap you'll get is around 10 lakhs uh, so you can and, and that's also based on the uh, cible score and the net worth of the individual so you can't really expect uh, to get a uh, get a higher uh, leverage under pmfme uh, similarly if it, if it's a scheme like uh, if it's a tribal department well, tribal welfare department then the maximum cap per customer will be approximately 3.5 lakhs um, so if the if as per the need assessment if the customer requires say, a 10 lakh rupee system uh, then the then uh, then essentially you have to work backwards and see how how that would uh, sort of work and, and how much gap finance and how much gap support is required uh similarly if you look at um a pmfky scheme which would be another scheme which essentially there is no cap of 10 lakhs uh so all this sort of information is is what needs to be gathered using the edp program this is where the soft deliverables uh, the soft uh, the soft cost comes in uh, we also sort of set the road map and set and sign mous with certain partners for example signing an mou with afps just the basic non financial mou to sort of help scale these units is, was one of our deliverables uh, which we essentially used uh, which we essentially hired we hired a local we hired a a a, 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 a specific resource resource just to look at signing these mous with uh, with with the lo- with uh, with the government departments that have a similar mandate uh so that's the overall sort of working of how how we use this uh how you how we used edp to sort of unlock these uh get leverage amount and sort of unlock the uh and create these channels for future sales as well uh yeah that's that's about it yeah. any questions yeah uh thank you thank you asar so uh, we'll move on to the next uh, enterprise so the next enterprise is snl so with just a minute yeah yeah uh so uh, so what we can also do like people if already applied uh, and after this presentation if they want to do changes and other stuff they can reapply so the latest one also we can can we can basically uh, consider for the uh, um, uh, going through the proposals so there is some challenges and chaini from uh, slm right just just give us one minute
Yeah, uh, so we have a bit of technical issue with uh, SNL joining. Uh, they'll just get back to us in two minutes. Meanwhile, uh, I call Impal Machines uh, to talk about their experience with EDP1, EDP2. Uh, Mr. Dayanindi, can you talk? Can you? Yeah, yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah. Can you hear me, ma'am? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, I think my face is not visible. <laughs> anyway, um, it's okay now. Good afternoon, madam. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much for giving this opportunity to uh, share some of my experience. Uh, actually, I have a very good experience uh, with the <laughs> Shelka Foundation. Okay, uh, okay. First, like, well, let me um, introduce about my company. My company, this uh, Impal Machines Private Limited, was first. Uh, I mean, it was uh, registered in the year 2019. Where the company, uh, we, I mean, uh, then makes uh, put processing equipments, uh, like for example, dryer of uh, like different uh, types, also like a ginger washing machine, uh, uh, this. Hello. Hello. Yes. Uh, Impal Machine Sadat Kiraji. They have a minute. I'm meeting me. Okay. Uh, good evening, sir. I'm in meeting me. I will call up after some time. Uh, you're meeting me, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Hello. Okay. Sorry for disturbing. Mm. Uh, okay. Uh, I mean, uh, we have developed. Uh, some of the machines uh, like uh, solar dryer, electric dryer, bamboo shoot, peeling machine, uh, vegetable styler, etc. So uh, in the EDP two, actually we uh, mostly uh, tried in the uh, soap part. So we sought mostly the soft support because since we are a new uh, company and also new uh, products, no first. Uh, how do we feel is that our all our uh, products should be first like, uh, validated so that uh, whenever we sell the product, okay, there is always a uh, question from the uh, clients whether your uh, product is uh, good enough or your product is like certified or like that. I mean, uh, this in you know, uh, order to like um, answer the question no first uh, we need to do some like in-depth study like regarding the efficiency of your products and all the scientific like stuff and that kind of uh, support okay I mean uh, this was uh, uh, received from the Selco Foundation uh, through the program and uh, also uh, we have, we could able to develop many color trails like video uh like what is what instruction like uh, in the form of hard uh hard copies and also we also uh, develop uh, this uh video uh of the uh, this one the uh, white instruction brochure we also develop like case studies also we develop uh, um, advertisement uh, short uh, video no, okay. I mean, uh, th that's how I mean, that's uh, sort of like lunch trip for us. Uh, that the uh, next step is uh, after, uh, uh, I mean, this phase is no, uh, like, what we feel is that we will uh, uh, like scale up our uh, production. I mean, uh, uh, so that uh, uh, we can uh, work. Uh, 
will be in the like, growth phase. That's what. Uh, uh, next, madam, I think this, I'm not able to. Uh, hello, it's okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, uh, uh, do you have uh, any yeah, questions? Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's completely okay. Yeah. Uh, yes. Am I audible? Yes. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, I think uh, we'll take the questions oh, yes, in the end. Yeah. So I just, uh, for some reason, uh, see, our other enterprise is not able to join. So I will just uh, present their uh, case study as well. For oh, just a minute. Okay. Okay. Yeah, just a second. There's some technical issue here. So uh, these are some of the uh, technologies developed by Impal Machines. It's a ginger turmeric washing machine, uh, wash, uh, like washing machine and electric dryer. And yes. it's a electric dryer. Two, these two are the models of solar electric dryer. So I'll just move on to the other enterprise. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so the other enterprise that we have worked with is SNL Energy Solutions. So SNL is based out of uh, Manipur, Northeast India. So we uh, we have been working with them uh, for quite some time now. So they actually are involved in uh, uh, technology, uh, live youth technologies related to uh, pottery, uh, loom lighting, egg incubator, etc so some of the problem statements that they are actually trying to solve on ground is uh, access to a clean and en a clean source of energy and also the uh, uh, increase in mechanization that actually leads to reduction of drudgery and manual mode of productions so we worked with them in un with our edp2 program where uh, so they were able to uh, scale with a gap support uh, for different types of technologies that were loom lighting pottery uh, mechanization of pottery, petty shop lighting and egg incubators. So some of the, uh, so these, we help them uh, scale these technologies and the other support that we provided them was uh, preparing technical modules, business development uh, that meant capturing su success stories, posters, flyers, case studies. And some of the learnings that they had was that um, uh, they uh, they were because of this they were able to initiate partnership with uh, a financial uh, financial institution like uh, seva and then uh, they 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 expect this to uh, they expect now to build on this partnership to be able to scale across manipur and the other key learnings that they had was to um, the important of mark, um, importance of market research that needed to be done before they could actually scale the solutions and also capacity building and collaborations uh, that would actually help them to promote their technology and uh, create uh, awareness among the end user about the utilization of the technology. Uh, so some of these learnings are here. So just giving, just showing the technology that they were actually scaled yeah so the yeah so uh, uh, the technology that here that is is the uh, pottery wheel and the uh, integration of pottery wheel in solar uh, energy i think yeah snl is integration oh uh, so Okay, so we have actually come to an end of the presentation. So some of the FAQs that we'll be taking, uh, we'll be presenting now and post that, we'll be ready to take your uh, questions as well. Yeah, I call upon uh, Nagesh, sir. Huh. Yeah, yeah. So I think we will... Share this presentation. Can you just uh, zoom uh, the FAQs if you can put on the screen? Full screen FAQs, yeah. So we'll share this presentation. We've just depicted some of the FAQs here that we are normally asked. Uh, and primarily these are, you know, is, is EDP an award? Will we be getting unrestricted money? 
you know, what is a financial model? How much leverage am I expected to bring? Uh, you know, what if the scale strategy does not involve FI and partnerships? So these are some of the questions that we have gotten over the past two EDPs and in this one as well. Um, similarly, I think people have asked us, you know, can I apply for programs outside India? Um, you know, what will be the due diligence process? Or who will be the jury? So we've attempted to answer uh, a lot of the questions that we were asked. So we're hoping that the FAQs will suffice, but we are happy to do a more interactive session right now on FAQs. And I think maybe if you guys can bring up uh, any questions that you have, we can definitely take a few questions because we have some time, but we'll def definitely after this, you know, feel free to reach out to any of us, uh, me, Nagesh, Sneha, Jaiswani, and others who are working on the program. Or just feel free to reach out. Yeah, they can put it in the chat. You can put it in the chat, or if you want to raise, I think there are two hands raised. Um, Sarita, do you want to quickly unmute and tell us your question? And then Keshav Sun, and then Viral. Go ahead, Sarita. Hello. Hello. Yeah, we can hear you. Go ahead. Yeah, uh, firstly, I would like to extend my gratitude to the, to the team of Salco Foundation for being part of this webinar. And uh, Huda, first of all, I want to introduce myself. I'm Sarita, and I'm working as an urban development manager at Vivoice Labs. So uh, we are a solid waste management company and we are working closely with municipal, uh, municipalities to improve waste management practices to uh, our waste management solutions. So uh, one of the key challenges we are facing is a lack of funding for crucial, uh, crucial IEC. IEC stands for Information, Education and Communication Activities. And uh, which are essential for aligning communities on the ground, reducing open waste burning and addressing vulnerable, uh, vulnerable, sorry, uh, vulnerable garbage points. And uh, my question is, uh, uh, like, I mean, we are keen to explore how our, your expertise and energy solutions might contribute to these areas. And uh, could Selco Foundation assist us in uh, designing sustainable energy-based interventions for our sanitation workers or uh, for support of IEC efforts to make our waste management system more effective? Yeah, or, for bringing uh, that up. So uh, definitely, I think one thing that I would request is that this program, you know, I I, I know that Jaiswini mentioned there is a you know shortlisting and a selection process for it, but yeah. we. Elko, we are looking at a triad system, which means that if you're not sure whether this program is a good fit or not, in any case, if you can reach out to us, send us some details in one or the other program, we can be, we would be able to sort of support you through this. So from what you're mentioning, uh, I'm not exactly sure if we directly fit into this program because this is purely hardware based innovations, uh, you know, specifically, which we are trying to scale through this program. Uh, but I think because you're working with waste for management plants, etc., we can look at supporting some of the powering and system designs through another program that we have. So just feel free to apply and then we are not through the program, but I think reach out to either Nagesh, Jaspini or Sneha and one of us will get back to you. Okay, sure, Uda. Thank you so much. That's all from my side. Thank you. I think Viral Nagesh has already answered your question. So maybe Keshav San. Uh, hello, uh, everyone. I am Midul Kumar from Cash of Sun Incubators and Machinery. So, just I wanted to ex uh, like express my journey with EDP2 in two minutes. That's why I uh, raised my hand. If you give me permission, I can describe about that now. Please go ahead, sir. So, actually, uh, before joining EDP, we were only uh, manufacturing the egg incubator uh, with. Uh, like normally a uh, normal egg incubator and solar dryers. But after joining EDP, we realized the importance of DRE driven solutions. So that's why after uh, getting the EDP, we uh, actually designed four systems with DRE uh, or solar with solar system with our e existing egg incubators. And we have successfully done that. After showing this type of things, and we also got the support from uh, EDP like uh, about market research, about awareness campaigns, 
our uh, lots of soft uh, support we also uh, got received from Selco Foundation with uh, through EDP program. Then uh, what happened, ma'am? After manufacturing, we are now also a CEE like clean energy enterprise also. So after uh, after looking at our works that we done with EDP with solar installations, so we are uh, we are like uh, having lots of works from a different kind of partners in ground level that we have to install lots of solar systems with that. So that was our first uh, intervention in solar energy with the EDP. That's why I thank all the EDP team, all the Selco Foundation team to support Kesofson as an enterprise that like that, ma'am. So I wanted to ask, uh, just tell these things. That's why I raised hand. Thank you. No, we look forward to continuing to work together because I think there's still a long way to go, both in terms of achieving actual scale with the egg incubators and the ecosystem for those egg incubators as well. So no, thank you. Sure, sure. We are always ready, ma'am. I think we had uh, Dayanidhi. Is that one of the questions? No. Okay, that's it then. Uh, uh, yeah, go ahead, Viral. You had something. Yeah, I had one more question with this. Uh, uh, first of all, good evening to the Selco team and other participants who are here. Greetings from Devidyal Solal. Uh, my question is like, uh, is this only a uh, program only for the scaling purpose or can we do pilot project also? Um, so we are, this program is focused only for scaling. Uh, we okay. are launching another program which will launch mid-November and the mid-November or maybe early December, uh, the mm -hmm. deadline for that will be Jan end. Uh, we are actually planning to onboard uh, 15 enterprises in that for pure R&D and innovation. So that will be for testing, for research, for, you know, very kind of innovation field tests for those kinds of things, uh, which, you know, it, it is uh, not for MVPs. This program is specifically to scale MVPs. Okay, noted. So the Catalyze Tech will actually launch sometime in December, and that will be also uh, that will be also a little slightly longer term program than what we have typically run because you know it would take some more time to to actually develop uh, certain new innovations. Okay, yeah, thank you. Thanks, Viral. So I think there are one or two questions which I can answer verbally. Uh, one, I think Jatin has asked, how do you calculate each category budget and its approval by Selco? And so essentially, long story short, Jatin, what we essentially do is we uh, benchmark certain costs based on typical costs in that region. So which means that if you say, you know, I'm training X number of farmers and my cost per farmer is 1,500 rupees, that's something that we will definitely have a discussion with you to understand why is it that much? Because our typical cost per farmer training in a certain type of area, maybe three 400 rupees, right? So we will have that discussion with you uh, to make sure that we are not, uh, you know, over budgeting or under budgeting also and in some cases it's also been that we've under budgeted for certain context so uh, because we have been doing programs with partners uh, you know over the past few years we have developed some benchmark costs but we don't like to cap those costs because a lot of times enterprises have very valid reasons as to why something is costing uh, you know a certain uh, you know above a certain market cost or why something uh, they don't actually need more because they may have better partners on the ground who are augmenting some of the costs so that's why we are not capping it, but we do compare it to market current prices based on the context and the activity. So that's something that we do internally. Um, similarly, again, like Nagesh said, we are not capping the amount. Neither are we capping the uh, you know type of resource that we are providing. Uh, the reason why we're doing that is because you know we we may. I, I mean, uh, that being said, it's not like you know we you. You should know us as an organization, like we are we're not government, neither are we, you know, having endless resources. So we will be definitely looking at it very strategically, you know, saying that okay, if you are proposing, let's say, a three crore proposal, and you know, and you know, and we know that that may not be something that we can do today with you, right? But that's something that we can discuss. Can we do the first 50, 60, the first up to one and see how we can catalyze the next five, six crores that it should lead to? But 
ideally please look at us as catalytic funding right it should be something that should help you unlock other funding resources it should not be something that you should uh, end up being dependent on year after year we are looking at you know how does our engagement with edp enterprises change over time and how does it actually lead to better unlocking of other resources i think one of the examples also is uh, one of the enterprises that we work with katidan you know they were able to showcase certain numbers and evidence through this program to raise certain investment. I think that ended up going on Shark Tank and raising further investment through the numbers that they had done. So I think there are, the, what the hope is really that this resource, please treat it as something which is very precious trust-based resources that we want to invest in enterprises to scale. So, uh, you know, don't look at us as an endless resource. Please look at us as a strategic catalytic resource to unlock further monies, uh, which can be from philanthropic, from investors, from government, from financing institutes, uh, even from certain other pools of cooperatives, FPOs. How do we catalyze more resources towards scaling the solutions that you have developed? Uh, that's really the goal. So yes, uh, Sumanth, we can help in uh, supporting you to uh, create and build innovative end user financing models. Uh, ideally, if you reach out for some pre-discussions while you're applying, we should be able to facilitate those. Um, and even after applying, we can on demand have specific sessions around unlocking end user finance with smaller groups or with larger groups, depending on the demand. But I would really, really request the enterprises that are on this uh, webinar and that will be working with us to really push and make use of the kind of networks that we can connect you to. But uh, why I'm saying to really push us is because that is really what kind of motivates us to you know, plan things according to what is needed because we don't want to end up doing things uh, which ends up being a burden on you rather than you know ends up being a strength for you. So ideally we want Selco Foundation to really be that muscle and that strength which should allow you to you know stabilize mm -hmm. and scale. So just feel feel free to reach out and have these discussions uh, so that we can contribute to the larger learning in the sector as well. Uh, yes, you can apply for more than one product. Um, that should be fine. I think we are eight minutes over time. And uh, is it a proprietary form with a clear problem to join this time? Uh, a proprietary form, will it create a problem? It should be fine. It's a registered company. It should be fine. No, Keshav Ji, I think it's, I mean, Keshav Sons, it should be fine. Um, yeah. Okay, thank you so much. We will share the video link and uh, and uh, we look forward to engaging. Uh, what I would request is not to put questions on social media, but to re reach out to us and we can uh, directly have those discussions with you. Um, Last question, turnover certificate. So, still you need to have the turnover certificate. Yeah, yeah. So, they do need to have an audited financials, essentially. Uh, go ahead, uh, Nature Farm Easy Tech Solution. You can just type it or ask it. I think you need to make them audio ready. So, we'll take last two questions, maybe in the last minute that we have. Uh, Nature Farm and, so, and Vishaka. I am from Director of Nature Farm Easy Tech Solutions Private Limited. And I have one doubt. Actually, we have started a startup company in June month. Earlier, we have worked with the Watson Foundation and uh, something. And we have started in June month. Now, it's a three months uh, startup company. Can we apply for two or more products? Or else we can apply only for one product? You can apply for two or more. Okay. Is there any instructions that uh, only uh, one year company can apply, two year company apply like that? No, we have worked with startups before to scale. It shouldn't be an issue. There is no criteria that you need to be active for one year or three years. But uh, definitely you should have an MVP and a proof of concept. Yes, yes, yes. Scale should be there for you to then sort of look at designing the scale program. Yeah. Now you have told me not to, we can apply to, but I have applied, already sent the Google form. Then again, can we, what is the deadline for the applying new products? Even this Nagesh has answered. Uh, the deadline is 23rd October. You can resubmit the Google form, same link. We'll just discard the previous link and you can submit it on the same link. 23rd October. 23rd October, yes. Yeah, Vishaka, last question. Hello. Yes. Hello. We can hear you. 
Hello. We can hear you, Vishaka. Uh, I can't hear you. Uh, can you just type it out then? Hello. Hello. Uh, Vishaka, I can't hear you. Just type it out. Okay. Uh, can you hear me now? Now we can hear you. Yeah. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, so uh, uh, my question is that uh, because uh, we are uh, uh, presenting an integrated solution of two or three technologies together and we have requested uh, for funds for one product development and two for creating uh, some uh, uh, you know, material information, uh, material on the usage of the products and this thing. Uh, uh, is it like uh, that you are for services? Uh, uh, what is the eligibility for you know these kind of services? So or I, Shaka, uh, please don't apply for this program for product development. That's a different program. This primarily things which are ready to scale uh, okay. and which can unlock resources. You applied for EDP. Mm -hmm. uh, Definitely, if you can write to us and just feel free to just write to Nagesh itself and, you know, copy any of us on the mail or in the message where if you have certain ideas and product, we can take it up separately. But this okay. program is primarily designed for scaling. Okay. So, uh, our application has aspects of both, design, uh, you know, for scaling uh, of uh, the technologies. And just for one of those technologies, we have, uh, you know, requested funds for product development. So we can just skip that part. Uh, so just to remove it uh, or the, the team itself will skip it and get back to you. Yeah. Okay, fine. All right. Okay. Thank we you. We so have to have a hard stop now, but uh, we will be available for questions and we look forward to working together and meeting all of you as well. Thank you so much. Thank you for attending and uh, have a good evening, everyone. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, we will be sharing the PPT. Uh, we'll be sharing the PPT, and uh, the last uh, page of the PPT has all the email IDs of uh, me, Nagesh sir, and Sneha. You can reach out to any one of us, and uh, people. Uh, you can also reapply to the program uh, again if you feel like you want to improve on your budget or change some of the mm -hmm. things proposals. Uh, we will consider the one that's the latest updated one. Uh, yeah, and please feel free to reach out for anything related to the program. Yeah. Okay. Thank you all.